Okay, welcome everyone. So my, my name is Heike Ritter and I will be host for this webinar. Thanks for joining and thanks for being part of our community. A few reminders before we start. This webinar is being recorded and will be shared publicly afterwards in our community at aka.ms slash security webinars. During the webinar, please feel free to ask questions at any time by typing them in the live event Q&A window by clicking on the ask a question button. Questions you post will be made publicly visible and if you prefer, you can post your questions anonymously by checking the box right below where you enter the question. As you can imagine, we often get many questions during these webinars and really we are doing our best to respond to all of them in real time. If the answer was not provided or if you have additional questions afterwards, please don't hesitate to ask them in the Microsoft 365 Defender Forum at aka.ms slash m365dtc. If you haven't listened, uh, if you're listening to this after the fact as a recording, you can also use that place to ask questions, of course. We love to hear your feedback on how we can improve these webinars, so please do so at aka.ms slash security webinar feedback. This is important so we can deliver the content you need. If you haven't already, please join our security community at aka.ms slash security community. Um, that's always the best way to ensure that you don't miss any future webinars, major announcements, and in our like our community, you can speak directly to our engineering teams who are building our security products. So please join us. So today I'm excited to have Amir Landeblau and Tim Wolfort talk about our XCR journey with Microsoft 365 Defender and the new converged portal. So handing over to you, Tim. Thank you very much, Heike, and thank you for having us this morning. We're excited to share with you uh, the journey of XDR and how we are landing that through the Microsoft 365 Defender product. So as Heike mentioned, my name is Tim Wolford and I work very, very closely uh, with Amir and a, a host of other very talented, very awesome security professionals uh, around the world. And we look after these products to deliver them to market for you. And so we are going to talk uh, about uh, Microsoft 365 Defender in particular uh, and some of the new and uh, exciting um, releases that we've had over the last couple of weeks. Uh, and Amir is going to walk through the, the product experience and sort of show you how uh, some of these new features and, and new experiences uh, actually work and uh, how you can utilize them in your own organizations. So without further ado, uh, we will dive right in. So I think it's important just to, uh, you know, sort of set the scene here and, and, and remember, you know, what is XDR? And XDR is a relatively new term uh, in the industry. And there's a couple of points here that I'd like to just sort of keep in mind and, and keep, keep this context as we walk through uh, the content today. And so XDR, or Extended Detection and Response, um, is a security threat detection and incident response tool that natively integrates multiple security products into a cohesive security operations system that unifies all licensed components. And so the two parts here that I'd like to focus on uh, is that it natively integrates multiple security products, and we'll see that uh, very much live and prevalent uh, in the solutions that we walk through. Um, and that it pulls together these licensed components. So not just these, these products and solutions that work within uh, an XDR solution, um, but also very much the data that comes with it. So really being able to analyze, investigate, and respond holistically to incidents across uh, an organization. So we've been on this long journey ourselves, and, and of course we've been on this journey with you, uh, our customers, this whole time as well, to develop uh, the tools to protect against advanced attacks. And if we think back, you know, a decade or even longer, you sort of saw the rise of, of simple things like computer worms and relatively straightforward viruses. Uh, and along that journey, we released things like built-in antivirus to protect against malware uh, and these simple viruses right within Windows itself. So as the Microsoft portfolio grew and organizations began these digital transformations, uh, they had more assets and a, and a larger perimeter that needed to be protected. 
So over the years, we've added uh, more capabilities and, and things to protect and prevent uh, incidents across Azure, uh, things like Azure Defender, um, AD, AADIP, you know, things that are built into Office 365 and built right into your um, cloud applications as well. So over time, um, you know, we've seen a, a rise in how complex and also in the frequency um, of attacks themselves. We've seen much, much more complicated uh, and more complex incidents coming through things like phishing or ransomware, human operated ransomware and web shell attacks. And so along that journey, we've expanded our mission to protect an organization's entire environment, so to protect that entire uh, perimeter as well. So to do that, we have our cloud native SIM, which is Azure Sentinel, and this provides the end-to-end -end visibility for all of your data across your entire organization. So this is bringing in all of your, your data from, from different clouds, from third-party applications uh, to really give you that, that breadth of visibility across the whole company. At the depth level, uh, we have our multi-cloud threat protection capabilities together through uh, Microsoft Defender, uh, sorry, Microsoft uh, 365 Defender and Azure Defender. So securing your end users and your Microsoft 365 uh, environments and also your cloud infrastructure and workloads on the Azure side as well. And I think it's important just to sort of think about for a moment where we've come from on this journey, but also why we're here. And some of these numbers are a little bit out of date now, but I still use them because if you think about the last 12 to 18 months, these are just even more relevant and they've become uh, even stronger or, or, or even increased. And we all know that, you know, as security professionals, the cost of a breach um, is is hard to quantify, but is, is quite scary. You know, you think if 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 you're having a a a breach that affects your your data or your customer's data uh, or even their customer's data, you, you, it's hard to put a price tag on that. Um, but it's all very scary, and you, you know, you see these kind of things in the news, or you have a ransomware attack, or or some breach or vulnerability or confidential data is released, and that's obviously what we're all uh, here trying to avoid. We've seen a massive increase in the number of tax attacks over the last five years. And as I said, not just the frequency of those attacks, but certainly the complexity of them as well. We use a huge number of security tools, and, and part of that I think is a, is a symptom of the, of the way the industry has developed. We've just developed more and more tools to cater to, to more and more different types of attacks and, and the way that security teams are siloed. Uh, and we'll we'll look at that in a bit in a moment as well. But if you think about endpoint protection and email protection and identity and cloud, oftentimes these are different products or different vendors, and they may even have their own security teams looking after them as well. So very, very siloed approach to not just prevention, but also analytics and response to. And as we all know, like with with these the, the amount of data that we have and just this this fatigue of signal and fatigue of alerts, um, you know, we're very under resourced. And, and you think about how the these volume of attacks and just the number of people in a security team to try and deal with these. So a lot of these products are built with with not just effectiveness and 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 the ability to prevent and respond to attacks, but also just to make your security and SOC teams that much more efficient. So we know that there's 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 a gap in the industry. There's there's a struggle with resource in terms of not just time and dollars, but also humans as well. So all of these tool, tools are built to to enable and empower your security teams to be as efficient as possible. And as we think about XDR, you know that that resource really becomes very important because you have a lot of these alerts that may live inside these different traditional silos of security coverage. And while they might have had different teams in the past to, to cater to them and to run those, those analytics and that response, there's a high probability that a lot of those teams aren't in the same building. They don't talk to each other. It may take weeks or months or even be impossible to stitch together the type of incidents that XDR is designed to, to pick up and respond to. So by the time you've you've found these alerts and, and stitched them together and realized that they're part of the same attack, the half life of that incident has passed. You know, the, the attacker has has done what they wanted to do and they've moved on. So these tools are really built to to bring all of that together, to give you that visibility uh, and that ability to be able to holistically respond to an entire attack at the same time from the same place. 
And so let's take a look at uh, how we're doing that. So we'll start with Azure Defender and we'll spend most of our time in the Microsoft 365 Defender side. But if we think about the cloud side, um, we have this multi-cloud coverage where we can uh, prevent and detect and respond across you know, AWS, GCP, and of course, Microsoft Azure as well. So this is present, uh, prevent, uh, sorry, protecting all of your cloud uh, and hybrid cloud workloads across servers, uh, SQL storage, containers, um, app services and industrial and enterprise IoT as well. And like Microsoft 365 Defender, all of this signal data uh, can be connected and pumped and plumbed into Azure Sentinel. So at that sim level where you can hunt and visualize and explore uh, all of that data in one single place. And so if we look at Microsoft 365 Defender uh, on the end user XDR side, there's some products here that you'll, you'll no doubt uh, recognize. And some of these have been through a bit of a rebrand over the last 12 months. So there's some familiar names here, Defender for Endpoint, uh, Defender for O365, uh, MCAS, the, the CASB part of the XDR offering. Uh, and then on the identity side, Defender for Identity and of course, AAD IP as well. So all of these have traditionally had their own portals, their own dashboards. They offer best in class and best in breed um, prevention capabilities, um, but also that ability to, to be able to investigate, do deep anal analytics uh, and respond to alerts and incidents too. But as we think about XDR and what we've offered for, for a while now is, is that ability to correlate into incidents. So where you might have a thousand pieces of signal data or a thousand different alerts, those can be uh, correlated together to recognize the ones that come from the same place or the same attack or they're somehow related. Um, and they can uh, drill down and, and, and sort of remove that, that fatigue of alert and that fatigue of signal noise uh, by turning thousands and thousands of alerts or pieces of signal data uh, into maybe a couple of dozen um, correlated incidents that you can then respond to. It also highly leverages AI uh, and automation. So not only is all of this data automatically normalized for you uh, and put into these, these um, sort of holistic incidents that then you can tackle, um, a lot of it is automatically responded to. So you have these self-healing capabilities uh, where anything that can be automatically resolved and returned and remediated to a safe state that is automatically done for you. So you don't have to see that in your queue or, or spend the time uh, dealing with it. The, the security team can now focus on the things that are, um, are, are bubbled up to be the most severe uh, or actually spend their time being proactive. And so one of the great capabilities here is, is the ability to, to hunt across all this data as well. So you can apply your own organizational knowledge, your own expertise. No one knows their customer their, their customer data as well as you do. Uh, so this is really the chance to focus on things like internal risk or insider risk uh, and be able to set proactive preventative measures in place by exploring uh, and leveraging your own information. And so as I mentioned, the, the XDR capabilities span across a number of these traditional security silos and perimeters. And for a year or so now, we've pulled data from all of these uh, different ones that you see here on the screen. Uh, and most of these had their own portals as well. And so what we announced a couple of weeks ago is the migration and convergence of two of these portals into the Microsoft 365 Defender um, XDR solution. So all of the capabilities and features and, and abilities that you know and love from your day-to-day -day operations within Defender for Endpoint and Defender for Office 365 are now merging uh, into a single portal. So there's no more need to jump around between different portals to explore and investigate and respond to things. Um, it can all be done from a single pane of glass. And Amir will walk you through these in a moment where you'll see uh, pages like unified user pages, unified device pages, where all of the uh, investigation and response tools that you need and that you're used to from different portals uh, can all be holistically used from the same place. So pretty exciting uh, news in that space. And obviously in the future, our intention is to, to keep doing this. So, you know, having this, this singular portal where we can analyze and respond to everything in one place. And so we'll be looking to bring more of these um, security products into um, that singular portal over time. And as I mentioned, it brings these, these wonderful unified experiences, which just save you a lot of time, but also enable this, this very, very powerful um, automation and efficiency that we talked about earlier. 
So not just coordinated prevention across that end user perimeter, um, but also the automated ability to, to respond uh, without having to, to dive deep into these incidents if you don't need to or you don't have the time to, uh, but to automatically uh, respond and remediate assets back to that safe state. And also the ability just to hunt, and we, we talked about hunting a little bit before, um, but this is really, really exciting. And we're, we're seeing so many people and customers really apply their own uh, organizational knowledge to get very, very proactive, um, not just with prevention, but also just with, with protecting that perimeter as well. And so as we converge these, these platforms together um, and these solutions to make this XDR solution, we also have a couple of new features that we're uh, really excited to share with you as well. So threat analytics is the first one, and Amir will show you this in a moment too. Um, but this is really how you can leverage Microsoft's uh, threat intelligence platform. We have thousands of, of security professionals who uh, spend their days tracking and monitoring the, the most high profile and the scariest threats that are out there in the world today. And inside the portal where threat analytics is visualized, uh, you can see a, a really, really uh, powerful and, and uh, conclusive executive summary of some of the most high profile threats such as Nobelium. Uh, you'll see what those actors tend to come after, how they tend to enter and affect an organization. Uh, and also, if you do have alerts and incidents within your organization that fit that profile, um, those will be highlighted for you as well as any mitigations or recommendations and steps you can take to uh, better protect yourself against that type of attack. Uh, so very, very proactive, uh, really exciting tool there. Microsoft Threat Experts is the, the phone a friend capability. So you may be dealing with an incident. Uh, there might be something come up within the environment that is uh, just a little sticky and, and tricky to deal with. And this is how you can, again, uh, leverage these professionals by creating a ticket, um, asking for some help uh, and, and getting a, a response back from, from someone in our threat intelligence team with instructions on how to deal with just that. Finally, the Learning Hub is a really exciting place within the portal uh, where we're bringing together the, the best and greatest um, recommendations, best practices and tips and tricks uh, for how to leverage these wonderful solutions. So we recognize that with multiple portals coming together and multiple products that have uh, massive amounts of documentation and tech communities and uh, all that good stuff, uh, this, is, this is your um, experience within the portal to, to be able to best leverage um, the best of the stuff that lives within there. And so that's uh, that's the introduction into the converged portal. Um, and without further ado, I will hand over to my friend and colleague, Amir Landeblau, who's going to walk you through what it looks like, um, do a bit of a demo and, and a bit more of a deep dive into how some of these features work and how you can leverage them in your own environment. So Amir, I will hand over to you. Thanks, Dean. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm Amir Landy. I'm from the Microsoft 365 Defender product team. Uh, and now that we are more familiar with our vision, I'd like to take a closer look together um, at the Microsoft 365 Defender portal right after uh, releasing it uh, or integrating the Office 365 and endpoint security capabilities into this portal and a bunch of more capabilities. So as Tim just mentioned, um, we are here today because we've completed the, a major milestone in the unification of the Defender for Endpoint and Defender for Office 365 capabilities, which were previously or up until today hosted only in the standalone portals. Um, and now they're integrated into the Defender portal. Um, and my goal for the next 30 minutes or so is for you to learn as much as possible um, about the unified portal, its capabilities, and for you to be able to start leveraging if you aren't uh, doing so already. Um, and specifically, we were hoping you will get the following from this talk. Um, first, for you to be a bit more familiar um, with what this portal is, how it's different from what we've been offering over the past year since releasing Microsoft 365 Defender, uh, formerly known as Microsoft Threat Protection. And also, we will do a short demo uh, in a few minutes over these new capabilities, which are shipped as part of this release um, that we announced a couple of, over almost two months ago. Um, and you will get familiar with them and have um, the necessary tools to start using them um, and deep diving into them. 
Um, of course, some uh, many of the feature owners across the team are here on our call, so feel free to ask questions about the capabilities. Uh, we're here to answer your questions. And uh, finally, um, you will learn the benefits uh, of what you're expected to get in this unified portal, whether you're an endpoint customer, a Defender for Endpoint customer, or a Defender for Office 365, or Microsoft 365 Defender user, or any combination, of course. Um, and we hope that you will have clarity on what experience it is and what you should, what your next step should be in this portal. So let's get started. Um, so since launching Microsoft 365 Defender um, and actually connecting here to some of the points team just made um, under, again, under the name Microsoft Threat Protection, um, over a year ago, we have been offering several exclusive experiences which are available in security.microsoft.com. These include the incident, hunting, and self-healing or automation experiences. Um, and they already leverage signals from the different domains and products such as user identity or endpoints or applications um, and email and collaboration tools and to provide an integrated security um, protection against attack. Um, but now, in addition to that, um, we've also um, announced this portal as the new home of Microsoft Defender for Endpoint and sorry about that, and Defender for Office 365 experiences as um, all the capabilities have been carried over into this portal and integrated into Microsoft 365 Defender, as you can see here. In addition to the existing alert and hunting data, all the endpoint capabilities, these screenshots are taken from the actual portal, which we will walk through shortly, and same goes to email and collaboration or Office 365, uh, which are shown here on the right. Um, and of course, this is as part of our journey to um, unify the security portal and to transition our users into a single security portal. And um, the next step, as Tim mentioned, will be integrating Microsoft Defender for Identity Portal, um, which is here. Um, again, not to be confused with the fact that we have a full representation already over a year of uh, Defender for Identity alerts and hunting data in Microsoft 365 Defender. So we're talking about um, carrying over and integrating all the identity capabilities in addition to what we already offer today. Um, and the second thing that you should know about this release uh, or this unified portal is that um, there's a major enhancement of our incident capabilities, our incident end-to-end -end investigation experience um, with a bunch of unified experiences that you can see here on this slide. Um, in an effort to create a consistent experience across the product in terms of data and look and feel. And some of these are unified entity pages, which correlate data across um, the different available products. Um, and these are expected to improve your end-to-end -end incident investigation um, inside the portal, and we will demo these in a few moments. And last, um, the last piece uh, you should know about this portal um, is the completely new Defender uh, experiences or Microsoft 365 Defender experiences are joining the existing incident hunting and self-healing. And these are threat analytics, um, our in-product threat intelligence solution from Microsoft security researchers and the Learning Hub, which provides access to learning resources such as blogs or instructional videos, official docs, and much more. So just just before the demo, uh, quickly recapping the three main takeaways I think you should remember about uh, the Microsoft 365 Defender portal. It's about transitioning um, the endpoint and Office 365 experiences into the Defender console without users, without you needing to use um, the product specific consoles or portals to get the job done. Um, it's about enhancing the existing incident investigation experience and a bunch with a bunch of unified experiences and it's about two completely new Microsoft 365 Defender features. And um, just like the capabilities I've just mentioned, um, any future improvements will be available on the, only in this unified portal. Um, and this is where things happen uh, moving forward. And I'm assuming um, there will be questions, if there aren't already, um, about changes in RBAC model. Um, so just to mention that uh, there is an enhancement in the existing RBAC model for Microsoft 365 Defender. We will cover that after the demo. 
And for those of you who are interested in MSSP solutions and support, then um, there are instructions at the end of this presentation that you can use to grant MSSP delegated access to the portal, and you will have access to that once we publish this presentation. Um, and before we jump into the features, um, it's important to note that the experience in this portal varies depending on the available products that you have for, the, for your tenant. So this is a high level um, table um, of the licenses and the features available per license in the security.microsoft.com portal. Um, the Microsoft 365 Defender features that are um, in this column here, uh, sorry again, um, are about um, a, the, refer to the ability to access and use the, both the existing and the new and enhanced capabilities I just mentioned. Um, and you are they are available if you're eligible to Microsoft 365 Defender. The endpoint features, um, again, the screenshot from our portal is for the Defender for endpoint users um, here. And it, may, it refers to the ability to see the endpoint features which have been carried over from the standalone portal. Um, and same goes to email and collaboration over here, um, both for Office 365 Plan 1 and Office 365 Pl Plan 2. So according to the plan you have, um, you will have the features um, available in this portal. And one last note about uh, folks here who are perhaps completely new to this portal, um, assuming most of you aren't. Um, and if you haven't been using Microsoft 365 Defender so far, then you're expected to get a whole new experience in this portal, both the Defender experiences, incident, hunting, action center, and so on, um, with the unified experiences um, and the existence of the full stack of endpoint and office capabilities in this portal that you're probably familiar with from the standalone portal. And if that's the case for you, then upon the first engagement with this portal, you will go through and on uh, short and seamless onboarding to MC65 Defender. Uh, it will be a, a one-time experience. It will be automatically triggered and you will uh, quickly uh, be able to start leveraging our Microsoft 365 Defender capabilities. So let's take a look, a look at this portal. Um, again, feel free to post questions in the chat. Uh, we are here to answer your questions. And let me quickly switch over to our demo environment. So we're, I'm logged into security.microsoft.com. This is the homepage. And I want to start by taking a look at the navigation bar so you can um, new, see the new additions if you haven't already. Um, so the top part over here um, is where the Microsoft 365 Defender features are. Um, we've shown these in the screenshots before. Um, as you can see, we have these few new members that uh, both team and I mentioned. Um, and Again, all these uh, capability, all these experiences leverage signals from the different security products to provide integrated protection against attacks. And below that, over here, we have the endpoint section um, with all the features and capabilities that have been carried over from the standalone portal and that belong to the endpoint space only. Uh, so you're probably familiar with the device inventory. So now, I see my session has expired. Let me just sorry about that. So this is the device inventory um, that lists the um, tenant's devices or the threat and vulnerability management uh, capabilities. Um, everything should be here. Below that, we have the email and collaboration section from the security related capabilities that have been carried over from the um, protection.office.com portal. Um, and a quick note here is that you should keep in mind that the previews or the standalone portal for Microsoft Defender for Office, as you probably know, hosts more than just Microsoft Defender for Office. It also hosts compliance solutions and much more. So not all uh, the capabilities have been carried over and integrated into this portal. Um, some of them can be found now in the compliance um, center at compliance.microsoft.com. Um, and here we've actually 
integrate all those who are all the capabilities that are relevant to the security re, uh, workflows uh, of your teams. Um, so I'm assuming everyone, all the office folks here are familiar with the Threat Explorer solution. So it's now here integrated into this portal. Um, or campaigns as another example. Um, and you can find the rest of the capabilities under the email and collaboration section. And finally, below that, on the uh, at the bottom of the navigation bar, we have the um, a management experiences, uh, which aggregate reports and permission and roles and settings and so on across the different products. Um, for example, if you go to reports, you see that you have the general report and all the endpoint related reports here and below that the email and collaboration. So all in one place and same goes to settings, for example, you by clicking on settings, you will get to um, this page, which can lead you to the different product settings um, in this portal. So now that um, you're more familiar, if, if that was any news to you, um, with this navigation, you can start seeing why we're actually calling this portal the new home for Defender for Endpoint and Defender for Office. Um, and as I mentioned before, in addition to this being the new home of these two products, um, we have made an enhancement to the incident and investigation experience in this portal with unified experiences. So I want to take the next few minutes to take a closer look at these experiences. Um, so I'm starting at the Microsoft 365 Defender incident which is uh, the heart of Microsoft 365 Defender. Um, and the incident is where the attack story is being told. And um, I'm going to start um, exploring the new unified experiences from this incident, which is um, like the starting point for my investigation. Um, so as some of you may know, um, up until recently, at least around two months ago since releasing um, this unified portal uh, in order to drill down into specific alerts um, and see the alert detail page, um, users were tabbed out to the standalone portals um, in order to um, get to the alert page. So now, um, starting from um, this release, uh, you can actually get to a unified alert page in this portal um, and drill into and see, complete your investigation in this portal. So. If I, for example, take, as you can see here, we have the service source and we have the different sources of the alerts that were correlated as part of this incident. Um, so if I think, um, an Office 65 alert, for example, this one over here, um, then by clicking on it, I, I'm, I'm staying in this portal, I get to the unified alert page. In this specific case, it's the Defender for Office alert. Um, but the idea is that all of them have the same structure and a very similar look and feel. Um, and it offers, um, worth to mention, full parity with the alert flyout that existed in the protection or exists today in the protection.office.com portal, but it was reconstructed to be more entity-centric and to highlight the activities or the message list as part of the alert. Um, so, for example, the right part over here, which you will have for any alert, regardless of the source, you will have the alert context. Um, for the Office 365 folks here, then you have a new capability of setting the classification um, of the alert and by that modifying the status and providing our security team with feedback. Um, below that, you have some general alert details, uh, the connection to the broader attack to the incident, which you have both here and here at the top. Um, and below that, the automated investigation that was triggered on this alert um, this is on the right part. And in the main part here, um, which is most of the alert, you'll have the, at this um, section here, you have the impacted asset. In this case, you have we have two mailboxes that were impacted by this uh, alert that was triggered. Below that, you have um, the alert story, and which tells actually what happened. And you can also uh, see the message list that is part of this alert, and you can even view them in Explorer, and you stay inside the same portal. So this is the same Threat Explorer that I showed you before. You can get to it from the incident in the same portal again. Um, and finally, um, we have here two messages as an example. So you can get from this alert to the email entity page, which is uh, a new uh, 
a new page which is exclusive to this portal. And I want to take a quick look at this email entity page. Um, so up until releasing this page, users had the email flyout, which you're familiar with, I'm assuming, um, under the Threat Explorer experience. Um, and this is a completely new page. Let me just quickly refresh this. Um, this is a completely new page, which is exclusive to this portal. It offers full parity um, with the defender with the email flyout, and it gives a comprehensive view of a specific email. Sorry about that. Some issues with the demo environment. While this loads, um, I'm just going to go back to the alert and show you um, another alert, um, an endpoint alert. So again, we started at the incident level. Um, going back to the alert tab, um, just a quick glance into a defender for endpoint alert, um, which is also integrated into the portal. This is probably even more familiar for folks here since it's very similar to the one that existed in the standalone portal. Again, the alert context, impacted assets in this case, either devices and users, and the alert story. Um, and next to the endpoint, we have uh, a third, um, a third uh, alert, uh, sorry, a third product, which uh, where you can now see its alert page in, integrated into this portal is uh, Microsoft Defender for Identity. So as you can see here, I'm taking this identity alert over here and I can get straight to um, the alert page. In this case, the service source is Defender for Identity, keeping similar structure and the Defender for Identity story for this alert. And before leaving the alert tab, just reminding you or showing you um, that we also have here exclusive alerts um, that are, sorry, alerts that are exclusive to the Microsoft 365 Defender, which are not available in the standalone portal, uh, like this alert over here. So just search for the uh, 365 Defender alert um, and you will, um, again, have uh, the ability to see them in this portal only. Um, so continuing the um, walkthrough in the incident, um, I want to take a close look at the impacted users um, in this um, attack. And as you can see, we have three users. Um, so clicking on the user over here will lead us to another unified experience. This is the unified user page. Um, and um, this page actually provides a single pane of glass uh, for user purposes from all the Defender workloads. Um, it's de designed to be a single source of truth uh, for all user needs, and it aims to answer three basic questions. Um, who the user is, which is more at this part here. Um, why should I investigate this user, or why is this user of any interest to me? And should I take, and what action should be taken on this user? Um, but the actions over here. Um, it provides, uh, and this is important this, and, and actually um, relevant to all the unified experiences, it provides the same experience regardless of the active products that you have. Um, it offers an investigation priority score here, uh, also scores for the actual activities of this user, and I'm assuming that if, if you have MCAS, you're familiar with the concept of investigation priority, but only here you have the most complete uh, user page that supports data from all the workloads in Microsoft 365 Defender. And finally, you have here, as I showed you, the actions that you can take on the user in case you reach the conclusion that um, you need to take any action on this user. Um, so this is on the user page. And back to the incident, um, we've seen the alerts. Um, that were correlated as part of this incident, some of the impacted users. And one more stop I want to make in our new enhancement is the investigations that um, have been triggered as part of this incident. As we can see, we have Office 365 investigations and Microsoft Defender for Endpoint investigations. Um, and both are represented in a unified uh, investigation page. Um, so if I open both of them, hopefully side by side, then you can see that they have very similar look and feel. Um, 
it actually introduces, this page introduces a shared language uh, for Defender for Endpoint and Defender for Office investigations. Um, so up until now, each product had its own investigation page. Um, so the unified investigation page aims to offer consistent experiences like like same like 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 the alerts and um, other experiences. So this is an office investigation, as you can see, because we have here mailbox as, as the impacted asset. But the very similar investigation over here is an endpoint investigation. In this case, we have um, the devices as impacted uh, assets or as um, assets that are investigated. Um, and you can also have, uh, in case there are any pending actions, then you will be able to see them here and they will uh, lead you to the Unified Action Center that we have over here in which they can be approved or rejected. Now, uh, back to the home page. Um, now that you've um, we've seen um, the enhancements that um, we expect to significantly improve your end-to-end -end investigation, I want to show you uh, also the unified alert queue. Um, we started at the incident uh, of queue over here, so I'm going to show you the alert queue. Um, so we actually unified all the alerts from the Microsoft 365 Defender product into one unified queue um, for all products, and it replaces the standalone queues for Endpoint and Office. Um, and although we encourage our users to go to the incident experience um, for triaging, and uh, this queue actually provides full parity with the Office alerts um, and includes also custom alerts that are not in the incident at the moment. Um, you can, if you can, you can look at this column here. Um, you can see that we have the different detection sources uh, from the different alerts. Um, you can also see filter them by the service source and um, also filter by policies if needed um, and m more uh, options. And finally, um, again, reach, clicking on an alert from this queue will actually lead you to the unified alert page. Um, that we just saw uh, from the incident. So if I take this alert, for example, with Office 365 Defender as a source, and again, this is the unified alert that we showed you before, um, just the entry point was from the alert queue. So these are um, the unified pages enhancements. Um, and finally, I'd like to um, have a quick stop at the Learning Hub. Um, so one of the asks that we've been receiving uh, from customers is where to look for learning materials for features, um, which are scattered across many sources. They exist, but they are scattered. And this is why we created this learning hub uh, for you to be able to uh, look for all the content that you either knew or didn't know that you needed. Um, and they are now here in one place. Um, we've organized everything um, to help your security teams um, either um, dive deep into features across the board. It can be very super basic training for um, new folks joining your teams or for a more experienced ones who want to um, learn new material and become even more experienced hunters. And you can use this to ramp up um, new folks, as I mentioned. Um, and what's interesting is that it targets different types of learners. So there might be audio-driven folks that prefer uh, to learn through audio. Some of you are extensive readers and those who, and some are, uh, some people just prefer interactive guides. Um, so we have here, for example, um, different sections. Uh, the learning paths actually focus on specific tracks, um, such as how to investigate using Microsoft 365 Defender or best practices for Office 365. Um, and below that, we have sections uh, paired the different products. So this section over here focuses on content for Microsoft 365 Defender and the bottom two for Defender for Endpoint and, and Defender for Office 365. And just keep in mind that this is the current version of this learning hub, but it's, it's, uh, it gets updated on a periodic basis. Um, and so just expect more and more content to um, getting into this hub. And one last stop, I want to show for those of you who are not familiar with how to provide feedback, because we're actually 
um, looking into all your feedback and um, reviewing it on a daily basis. Um, in case you have anything you want to tell us, every, anything that is missing for you, any suggestion, then you can do it through this uh, in-product feedback. It just all quickly opens the feedback widget. Uh, you can give us your score and tell us what um, anything in your mind. Um, it would be great if you feel comfortable with sharing your email, then we can even follow up after we read your uh, feedback and even have a conversation uh, about uh, your suggestions or your concerns um, and including the screenshot so you can so we can uh, make sure we understand what the feedback is about. Um, so the more information you provide us, then it's easier for us to um, address your needs and help you. So this is here. Um, so this was our short walkthrough. Let me go back for some more content and some, some uh, more stuff I want to cover on the presentation. So as I promised, um, we will also discuss our back and um, also some uh, advices on what your next steps should be. Um, but first, an, another stuff, uh, just to quickly talk about threat analytics in Microsoft 365 Defender. Um, so as you know, or you don't, threat analytics is our built-in threat intelligence solution. It helps security teams face um, emerging threats um, as efficiently as possible. And it offers reports like this report that we see over here. Um, and the idea is to help use the Microsoft Threat Intelligence team's unique knowledge and compare your organization's security poster relative to this threat. So many of you, I'm sure, are familiar with threat analytics in Microsoft Defender for Endpoint. Some, or even many of you, are already familiar with Microsoft, uh, with sorry, with the threat analytics in Microsoft 365 Defender. Um, so this is a major enhancement to the Defender for Endpoint uh, threat analytics. It now includes um, email related mitigations and detections in addition to the existing endpoint data, a view of the incidents of the Microsoft 365 incident that are related to the threat, and uh, in general, uh, an improved design that um, is meant to help you quickly identify actionable information in the report um, and take action. So this is really just a, a glimpse into it. It's available to Defender for Endpoint and Defender for Office E5 customers. It's exclusive in this portal um, as the rest of the features. Um, and feel free to try it out yourself if you haven't done so already. RBAC, as promised, um, as I'm sure many of you are interested in this topic or, or concerned. So let's um, talk about it a little bit. So in addition to all the capabilities that we saw, um, we are committed to providing all these personas in the organization the ability to work in this unified portal. So if up until now a user had to be assigned, or not up until now, up until uh, a few weeks ago, uh, had to be, the users had to be assigned one of the five global roles in Azure Active Directory. Now the portal allows users with custom roles um, from one of the products um, to access it. Um, it allows um, more granularity of permission enforcement um, and the ability to provide access to specific data. Um, even if, um, and if the customer has custom roles, then it's important to keep in mind that you don't need um, to do anything to leverage this capability. It's out of the box. Um, we support custom roles from Defender for Endpoint, Defender for Office 365, and Microsoft Cloud App Security. Um, and there's a mapping of which permissions and roles are needed to access each experience in the portal. In Microsoft 365 Defender, it's attached um, to the end of this presentation. It will be available to you as well, but also it's, of course, available like everything else in our official documentation. So you don't really need to wait for this presentation. Um, so the key takeaway from this slide is that Microsoft 365 Defender now respects the per product custom roles. Um, a quick note about hunting, advanced hunting users here. Um, this um, relates to Defender for Endpoint users. Um, if you're get, so as you probably know, you're getting much more value when moving to uh, use hunting in Microsoft 365 Defender. 
um, which in addition to the existing endpoint data also offers uh, a much broader set of data from Defender for Office 365, from uh, cl Cloud of Security, for Defender for Identity, and more. Um, but just there are two things um, that you should be aware of when you start use hunting in Microsoft 365 Defender, and you can find the information here. Also, this is again available in our official documentation. We even also posted a blog about this to um, guide you um, through these tiny changes, um, but just for you to be aware in case that's, um, that's the case for you. And um, finally, about the portal, uh, we also support localization. Um, we support 11 languages, and there are also custom themes that you can use to brand the portal. Um, the time zone um, can be localized through the security center settings, uh, the settings, one of the sections of the settings I showed you on the demo. Um, so um, just to keep that in mind. And I want to conclude our discussion with a few next steps um, you, should, you should or um, you would like to take um, to start your journey if you haven't done so um, from the standalone portal to the unified portal. Um, so we know that, um, first of all, the first step is using the unified portal the, um, side by side with the standalone portal, um, while shifting to access more and more the unified portal from any entry point that you're used to. Um, so we know that uh, users um, have different workflows and habits. So maybe the, the most basic one would be just those, who, those here who just used to start your day by browsing to securitycenter.windows or .microsoft.com um, and getting to the experience, uh, to the alert queue, to the incident queue, or whatever, or to protection.office.com. Um, then you can then we advise you to start your day by browsing to securitymicrosoft.com. You will find, as I showed you, um, all the security stuff um, there, and you should expect to be able to complete your day-to-day -day -day tasks in this portal. Um, we know some of you um, actually rely on email notifications for alerts, so you get an email with a notification about an alert that was triggered, and then you click on the link and get to the portal. Then we uh, added new links um, pointing to alerts or to the incident, to the specific alert or the specific incident to the new portal. Um, so it's just a matter of clicking a different link. I'll show you two examples in uh, the next slide. And same goes to SIM, uh, in case that's the, that's how you used to get to the portal by get, getting links from um, Defender for Endpoint, um, same APIs, then we've also added new links and you can use those links to get to the unified portal. Um, and again, we're hoping that um, you'll have the easiest and almost seamless way to get to the um, unified portal without having to actually change anything in your workflow. So these are two examples. This is, um, for, I'm sure that the endpoint uh, users here are familiar with this email notification that um, informs you of a new alert. So as you can see here, we've added new links adding, uh, pointing to the new portal, um, and you can just use them and get straight to either the alert, this, the same specific alert, or the incident that this alert is part of uh, in the Defender Microsoft 365 Defender portal, or on the office side, um, you can uh, simply click on uh, view alert details in that leads you to the Microsoft 365 Defender alert page, the same unified alert page that I showed you before. Um, and this was your first day. Um, so once you feel more comfortable with living only in this uh, new portal, then you can just complete the migration using automatic redirection. Um, so for customers who already want to um, move their team, this is a great tool um, to get your team do that. Um, in any case, you should aim to start working more and more in the Unified Portal for endpoint and office purposes as early as possible. That way you, you also have the chance to get used to this portal, provide us feedback of anything that is missing or that requires extra attention, and that's exactly what we're here for. Um, and a few things to know about redirection. Um, first of all, um, these are screenshots taken from the portal. Um, as you can see, we have um, 
two toggles for end, one for endpoint, one for office. So if you you can control the redirection for each product separately, um, in case you feel ready for one of them, but you still need a few more days or weeks um, um, for any for before you turn on for the other port product, then you can do that independently. Um, it's controlled on the tenant level, so it's a tenant level control, um, and most importantly, it maintains user context, meaning experiences or pages are actually redirected to the equivalent experience in uh, the unified portal. Um, so if you got to the protection that office portal and you wanted to go, you had like a bookmark leading to Threat Explorer or um, any other experience, then once you click on it, you will be redirected to the equivalent experience to the same Threat Explorer in the unified portal. So you don't have to find your way in the new portal, you will just get exactly where you want it to. And finally, it can be turned off uh, easily through the single single click uh, at the moment. It's the same toggle, so don't hesitate to give it a try. Last, I want to talk a little bit about APIs. Uh, as I know, um, probably many of you are engaged or interested in the API space, um, so we are exposing the Microsoft 365 Defender experiences and value also via APIs. Um, so we've rolled out a new set of APIs over the Microsoft 365 Defender. We started with incidents. It's really the heart of Microsoft 365 Defender, and it allows you to either list or retrieve or manage the Defender incident. And if the, the incident that you actually retrieve through the API is equivalent to the one in the interactive portal, uh, and you'll be able to see the incident, the collection of alerts correlated under that incident, manage it, update its status, and so on. Um, we also have an advanced hunting API. Um, you can run advanced hunting queries over the Converge schema, uh, not only endpoint, but also, as I mentioned, identity application email, and more. And this is on the new stuff that's going on. But with that said, um, it's important for you to know that we, if you're using existing API integrations, you can continue to do so um, regardless of the transition to the unified portal. So uh, of course, we're, um, all, any existing workflow will continue to work. Um, I also showed you a way to use an existing endpoint theme integration to uh, get to the new alert page. So um, it's important to know that as well. Um, and I already showed you how to provide feedback and um, how to make a feedback um, more valuable and with the more, most information for us. Um, so we're learning from this feedback on a, and we're looking at, the, at it on a daily basis um, to understand if what we're offering to you is what you actually need for a smooth transition or in general um, across the Microsoft 365 uh, a Defender um, experience in this portal. And um, we actually count on the details that you provide. It's really insightful for us and keep uh, this feedback coming. Um, so I want to thank you uh, for being with us today and also for um, joining us on this journey. Uh, we see this unified portal as a great opportunity uh, with limitless benefits to our users. Um, we are working around the clock to get everything on time. Um, and we are committing to helping you and providing you with the needed support uh, for a smooth and efficient transition. Um, and as you already know, we learn and we adapt and we are here to listen in case uh, you want to share with us anything. Thank you so much, Amir and Tim, for yet another great webcast. Um, before we end the call, just uh, some reminders. The recording and the slides will be made available on aka.ms slash security webinars. You will also find our upcoming schedule for more webinars and you can register there. One that I want to highlight is on May 10th, which is another Microsoft 365 Defender webinar where we have our lead speak series, Advanced Hunting and Microsoft 365 Defender. And again, registrations and all the details, aka.ms slash security webinars. If we miss to answer your questions or if you have additional questions, so please come and visit our Microsoft 365 Defender forum at aka.ms slash m365dtc. And again, 
Thank you, Amir and Tim, for today's session. Thank you to the rest of the team who helped answering the questions. And most of all, I want to thank all of you being, for being part of our community and for joining us on those webinars. And we hope to see you next time. Please provide your feedback on aka.ms slash security webinar feedback. And with that, goodbye and see you next time.